Hi there folks, I'm Keegan Van Hook and welcome to Us As We Are. Behind me, Housing Now has set up an encampment outside of the Ashland Police Department. This is for demonstration purposes, protesting the treatment of the homeless by police. And this is the third location that this demonstration has taken in the last three days. In this episode, we're going to bring you interviews with the man who started it, Joseph Gibson, as well as extended coverage of the three locations that this demonstration has taken so far. I am home free. I am not homeless, right? Being home free, I have removed any need to, to pay bills outwards. I have removed a lot of what people spend their time on in order to live. I can live without spending that time. Mm -hmm. and that has freed me up to do that which I choose to do. So and, like some people would call it homelessness by choice? Um, some people do, but mm -hmm. there is a definitive difference between homeless and home free. Okay. A homeless person is a person who wants residence. Right? You try to put me in a home and I'll go after you for cruel and unusual punishment. Hmm. You like to be out here. And, no, and this is a lifestyle choice and I will sleep outside. Hmm. Period. Um, so I do voluntary stuff. I, I do all sorts of stuff in the community just because I have the time and the ability and I care. Mm -hmm. So there's four different people up in the North Mountain Retirement Community that I did daily dog walking for did not charge them anything. In fact, turned down a lot of their their effort and aid towards me because I'm also very much a minimalist person. Mm -hmm. um, about the only thing that was a regular trade was my morning cup of coffee. <laughs> yep. Um, in fact, about half of the money that people end up giving me, I end up using that on actual homeless people. Huh. Um, world of difference. A homeless person is a person that is in a situation where they don't want to be in. Mm -hmm. You know, and trying to figure out what you're doing and be positive and set goals and move forward when you are not liking any aspect of what everything mm -hmm. from your sleeping to your eating to how you're socializing to how society views nothing is positive. Mm -hmm. So trying to to make a few steps is is hard for a lot of people. Totally. Whereas for someone like me, <laughs> this is my choice. Right. I love it. You know, so can, can I ask why you chose the home free lifestyle? Okay, so my father got complete custodial rights of me and my sister when I was six months old. Mm -hmm. My dad, when he was 15 years old, ran away from New York on a bike and got all the way over here to Oregon to an aunt's house. On a bike? On a bike. Oh, wow. Yep. And this was back in the day where you could sleep in people's barns and do a little bit of work for people as you're traveling across the country. Um, right. And so that's literally what he did. And that was his opening to the traveling lifestyle. And, to, and at that time, Rainbow Family had just been starting. And so the whole hippie movement and all that. And he got involved in a couple commune properties traveling across the country. And he finally made it out here. Um, that really changed who he was as a person. Mm -hmm. um, he, he was young, 15, 16. He hadn't become a worker, hadn't become stabilized in that, oh, I got to do the 9 to 5, I got to pay this, I got... No, he got opened up to there are other lifestyles. Mm -hmm. So later in his life, when he has a six-month child and a three-and-a-half-year-old child, and he's the sole parent at this point, um, we moved around a lot. Um, I think I went to 14 different schools going up. Um, so festivals and concerts and rainbow gatherings, anything that is a temporary community of people coming together to have a good time. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, he always worked. So when I chose to be home free, when I literally, I, I rebelled against the Rainbow Family way of life by going to Job Corps to learn a trade so that I could go and start a company and show everyone how to do a corporation right. Hmm. So if you're a hippie kid and you think, ah, oh, freedom, everything you want to do, even hippie children rebel against their parents. Right. <laughs> just so, in the other direction, you're like, well. Just the uh, complete opposite other direction. So I, I actually went to Job Corps with three of my hippie traveling friends, and we were going to own a restaurant and start a restaurant, and we did, and the IRS shut us fucking down. Rebellious hippies, I, yep. I like it. Re rebellious hippies. We're going to go and start a business. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so society literally shut me down on that, mm. you know, and then second time in my life where I'm trying to work and whatnot. Um, the girlfriend I was with, we had a child, and she lied to cops, and I went to jail. Oh, damn. So that shut me down a second time. Um, so after a third time, which I really don't want to get into, I finally decided 
that that way is not for me. Sure. You know, so even though I was raised to be a traveler, yeah. I tried to be societal. Mm -hmm. And now I'm just a traveler. Interesting. Um, yeah. I have a little angst about situations and whatnot. No um, if you have no money, you have no rights here in America. Also, I think that takes us to the demonstration that you're planning yep. to have tonight. Why don't you tell us about that? So, it is it is a demonstration in one aspect, but at another point, it's not. Okay. Um, I'm going to be very clear on this, that I am exercising what is necessary to my life. Mm -hmm. That is what I'm out there. I'm going to do so. Um, other people are in support of this. Well, here, what is it that you are going to do? I am going to sleep. Sleep where? I'm going to sleep at the, the plaza, at um, Lithia Plaza, is that what it's called? I think it's just the Ashland Downtown Plaza. Yeah, the Ashland Downtown Plaza. But yeah, that is the plan, is to go somewhere that is very public, very apparent, um, and to completely violate the city of Ashland's prohibited camping ordinance. Mm -hmm. So in Boise, Idaho, um, there, is a, there is a group of homeless people that got a lawyer and they took the city of Boise to court because they were being criminalized for their ability to sleep. Mm -hmm. They were literally being told you have no legal nor lawful option of obtaining sleep within the city limits. You have to leave. Right? Moving people along has been seen as criminal. Mm -hmm. But this isn't moving them along. This is targeting something else. So the Boise decision was that criminalizing sleep when you have given them no other legal nor lawful option of obtaining sleep is, in and of itself, cruel and unusual punishment. It is violating our Constitution to our citizenry. The Eighth Amendment. Yep. So, that's what the Boise case was. Um, the Ashland Police, like, the day after the Boise case was made, Police Chief Ty O'Meara literally called Vanessa and told her, yeah, we know this decision has been made, but no, it doesn't apply to us because we're not criminalizing people. Hmm. Ours is a civil infraction, so that judgment doesn't concern what we're doing. But you would make the argument that it is effectively criminalizing people what they do? Um, it's not whether or not you are criminalizing. Hunting a person in their sleep for their sleep is criminal, hmm. period. It does not matter if that ends up in court or not. Gotcha. It does not matter if that ends up in criminal court or not. Gotcha. The action, hunting a human being in their sleep for their sleep, is against our Constitution. Um, yeah, we have inalienable rights. Right mm -hmm. to life. Sleep is necessary to life. Of course. You cannot target that. Um, but Police Chief Ty O'Meara is a person that does. Mm. Flat out, period, does. Um, my actual accusation in part of being public is that I am going to be making an accusation against Police Chief Ty O'Meara, um, Ashland Judge Pam Turner, the city attorney, and the, the current mayor of the city of Ashland. John Stromberg? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. All four of them, I am charging them with conspiring to inalienate my constitutional rights. Gotcha. Right? I, they, in talking with other people about where exactly should I be doing this, um, Lithia Park was brought up as a location. Mm -hmm. And that's the first thing I brought up was that is if there's hours of operation, then they will get me on that rather than what I am doing. Mm -hmm. If I'm in a situation I do anything, like, like I'm in the no smoking area and I decide to light up a cigarette, I'm going to get hit with that. Right. So in standing up for my rights and saying these people are wrong, I can do no wrong. I have to put myself in a position where I am I'm completely a civil entity other than I refuse to abide by this. Gotcha. Yeah. So you will strictly just be camping and you will not No, I'm really not camping. Or we are not going to use that word. Camping sleeping. is a recreational activity. Mm -hmm. I am not engaging in a recreational activity. You're sleeping. I am sleeping. Understood. Yep. That's the first thing, is this false verbiage that everyone keeps handing out. Then, if you follow that verbiage, you then have cause. Sure. Right. But if you use true and transparent verbiage instead of the psycho-manipulative behavior, you would then end up with a different result. 
What kinds of changes do you hope to see in these kinds of policies? Um, all sorts of other people are looking for other changes. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a Housing Now group that really, really wants at least 70 units of some fashion to be made available in some way. Um, cool, that's great. I, I would see that as a positive and beneficial change here in, in Ashland. Mm-hmm. Um, there's talks about removing two officers and using their pay as a way of helping the homeless. Mm-hmm. Um, cool, Ashland actually has between three to five officers more than what this city actually needs. Mm-hmm. And this is something that the, the city and, and the, the, the community has really been debating, and it's actually a pretty um, touchy issue. Well, another question I have for you. Yeah. Um, we have a new, a very new uh, set of city councilors and the new mayor coming into power in January. Do you have hope that that may sort of enact some change in this area? Um, no, no, nope. Because effectively, you only have um, Julia Akins is going to become mayor, right? And she is a community advocate. She's a homeless advocate, and she is going to try to make change. And then we have Gina. Decane um, is going to be stepping in as city councilor. Mm-hmm. Um, but what you still have is nine city councilors that have voted that yes, prohibited camping is completely a good thing. Mm. So even though you have a mayor and you have one new additional, you have not changed the numbers enough. Gotcha. Period. Yeah. So do I expect or see city council doing anything? No. Mm-hmm. No, actually. And that was something I was going to be looking into today was the oath of office of the city councilors and whether or not they are required by law to turn over criminal activity of those agencies under their authority. Mm-hmm. And if I find out that's true, then I'm charging each and every one of them as co-conspirators. One big question is, in the event that you're arrested tonight, um, it, what would you want people to know slash how could they potentially help you out? <laughs> um... I am great about personal decisions and personal choices. Mm-hmm. Um, part of what I was going to be portraying tonight is that I would really love citizens to go and make a sign, I need to sleep, mm-hmm. and to take a picture of themselves with that sign and post it, okay. share it, try to get other people to also say, I need sleep. Because once our community firmly acknowledges that each and every single one of us does, then those people that are targeted that, they can't then deny what their actions are. Right. And right now, that's what we have is a lot of people who are unaware of what's happening, people who think that the Ashen police are using their their decision-making process in order to go after people that are destroying the land in their camping. Mm -hmm. And no, it's not. Each and every single homeless person is being targeted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, if there was one last statement that you wanted to make or something that I I didn't ask about that you wanted to discuss, um, do you want to bring that up now? (sighs) I love Ashland. Love Ashland. I love Ashland. It is beautiful. I love the people. I love the environment. Um, I have actually been here since 2014. I have only left eight times since the time that I said, nope, here's where I'm going to stay. Um, my feet are itchy. I want to move on. Mm-hmm. But I have decided that as, as long as this is something that I got hit with and it's still something that's going to happen, here I stay until it's resolved. Gotcha. And now that I've decided to step it up to this extent, I'm just going to keep stepping up and stepping up and stepping up until it's done. Fantastic. Okay, Joseph Gibson, I want to wish you luck tonight, and uh, thank you so much for talking to us. Yeah. And again, your name was? Uh, I'm Keegan. Keegan. And you are? Trip. All right. Trip? Trip. All right. Yeah. Well, Joseph, I do have audio. You want to tell me how you're feeling? Yeah, um, I am a little stressed. (laughs) Um, The whole butterfly in the stomach's feelings times like a hundred. Yeah. In the last like three, four hours, I have peed like five times. Oh, Um, (laughs) jeez. This this is what stress does. It it makes you want to flush your system and get all the toxins and just 
streamline towards that that whatever it is that relieves the stress totally um but societal stress is not something that you can physically relieve mm -hmm. so yeah and that, that's just like on my mind right there and it, it's like i'm a people watcher and I understand when people are stressed, they're not making the most rational, conscious decisions. Mm -hmm. And so here I am going into something where I need to be absolutely perfect. It's actually a virgin tent. Huh? You got a, a scooby snack? Oh, sorry there. <laughs> you got a cigarette? Oh, yeah. Where are you, uh, where are you thinking about having your tent at? I'm not sure. I was, this is virgin. I've never pulled this tin out. That's why I was kind of seeing what the size is. Oh, and then I was going to look around kind of just determine where I want it to be. Um, think about the quality here. We have some other tents we're going to set up yeah. too. What are you building, Eric? A uh, tripod. What's it for? We're going to hold this banner up. Nice. Yeah. So we can keep it up there. Um, and the way I thought of it is that either A, we would get shut down as we set up, or B, they would come and let us know that this is violations and they may have to take action, blah, blah, blah. And if they did that, then I would then be concerned at about 3 a.m., mm -hmm. you know. But as it is now, even though we're unplanned, unpermitted, um, and with how things have already gone, the only fear I have is this happening for a week or two, and then the established pattern of behavior and what other people are doing then being used as a reason to shut this down. Mm -hmm. um, which is why I really do think we need to move to the area right across the street from the library and the front part of the, the firehouse. When do you think you would do that? Um, tomorrow. Oh, okay. We already did the flyers and everything telling everyone that we would be here, uh -huh. but I really do think that we need to change tomorrow afternoon, evening-ish, you know, whatever, and relocate over there because Thanksgiving. Yes. This is the, the downtown center shopping area. Yeah. And I actually do think we will get more visual publicity. Um, at that location, you actually have both lanes of traffic, both directions passing by. Totally. Um, and I think banners and whatnot would actually be more apparent there than what they are here. Mm -hmm. um, just the various different aspects. The only negative is, is here you can be more social. You can make more person-to-person -person contact, mm -hmm. but because of COVID, I don't actually see that as a as an actual positive. Mm -hmm. Even though, as far as what effect would you have is getting your information out, that is a positive thing. Totally. Um, but that's just my thoughts. I don't control or own anything. Um, there may actually be a situation where most of the people stay here, and I'm the only one that goes and moves over there. Sure. You know. Um, but as I've been very clear with everyone here. I am not any part of a group protest or a group action. There is absolutely no person here who has authority over me. There is no person here who I have made agreements with. So how does I it, am a person here in public space to sleep. Here's a question. How does it feel to have kind of all this momentum build up around you making that independent decision? <laughs> um, it is interesting that I have always felt that there was not enough support in the community. But then once the fires happened, the Alameda fire, and with the number of people that got displaced, I started to think, now, now will people finally think, oh, we have to solve this. Mm -hmm. And so may maybe that is a part of the impetus of all this, and maybe it is that these people always were there, and I just didn't know. But I've been a very vocal speaker to every advocate here in Ashland for years. So I really do think it's more the Alameda fire. It's more the, the two court decisions that have recently happened. And it is more people now having a person that they know is on the verge. It's no longer being one paycheck away. It's at any moment the person that they are staying with could go, you know what, I want you out of here. Mm -hmm whether we're still getting there. I think we've gone past. It's, it's, the magnitude is looking like that it's 
It's like as close as we ever can. Now we're equal as people, then why can't we see what is evil? All right, Joseph, to begin again, um, why don't you just sort of fill me in on uh, what's happened since we last spoke on camera, uh, with you guys getting the 24-hour notice to vacate, and uh, now what your new plans are. <laughs> um, just the vacation thing alone is a 10, 15-minute conversation. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to break it down to... There was four officers that came to the plaza, one of which is Detective Hector, um, or Commandant Hector. Uh, he is not an Ashen Police Officer. He is the second in command of the Ashen Police Department. All right, there's Police Chief Ty O'Meara sits at the top, and right below him is Hector. All right, um, Hector and uh, three other officers, one of which was uh, Officer Carpenter, whose job description is to target the homeless people. Mm -hmm. um, they all came up and, and they, they asked, you know, is this your tent? I went, no. They asked, you know, is this your tent? It wasn't mine. So I said no. And so they just put a piece of paper on it. Um, that piece of paper is a uh, prohibited camping eviction notice. Um, none of them, re they, they all refuse to hear me say, I am sleeping. And there is a difference between prohibited camping, this recreational activity, and a homeless person's need to sleep. All right? Um, he went and posted a second sign, and then he asked, is this your stuff? And I went, yes, this is mine. And he went to post a sign on my stuff, and I went, you cannot do that. You know, we've, we have a judicial decision that the action of targeting me for my sleep with no other option given is cruel and unusual punishment, even if it's just a civil infraction. This notice is not a civil infraction, okay? It flat out says, if at today, Thanksgiving, 1230, I have not disbanded my campsite, I will be arrested. No longer a civil infraction. This is the lowest level misdemeanor that they could get me in jail on. So what's so your plan? With the plan, yeah. with everyone's consideration and knowing what community is and everything, um, we have our eviction. We will move. And I will verbally protest and say this is not camping, but I am now going to go and sleep in another yeah, place. I'm just thinking while we're crossing. Let's get the banner, Jim. Yeah. Hey, we'll hold the side! Oh, yeah. The new spot, Joseph? This is my spot. Um, as far as I can determine, me personally setting up right here, there is six feet margin on all of the pathways around me. Yeah, if you want to put like one there, another one maybe like right here. Um, there is a space right across the street where you're still able to leave six feet. There is also a space right over here in front of the firehouse. So you do need to worry about the social considerations, or at least I feel you need to worry about social considerations, about allowing people to also make use, because depriving them of that use, you're not more important than they are. Yep, that's his second time around. What my particular plans are is to be able to find a way that I, a home free person, can legally and lawfully have my lifestyle within the public domain. That, that is what I am looking for. And happy Thanksgiving. Oh, you get a fast car. I want a ticket to anywhere. Maybe we make a deal. Well, so tell me what has been going on. Just to give me a basic <laughs> update. Like, how did you wind up here? All right, so we got our eviction from Lithia Park. That was the last time that you guys had been around. 
Um, we then moved right in between the downtown public library and the fire building for, for Ash. And I don't know if they have more than one, but that's like the one everyone sees. Um, and we tried to see, can we sleep here? And 5 a.m. is when they came up and there is such a smile in their voice. Hey, this is the Ashland Police Department, just here to da 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 da. Um, I ignored them in the entirety. So I laid there, listen, yeah, okay, you're posting. And they drove away, came out, got my posting, sent that off to the lawyer. Loving you! Um, so we got together about well, about 7 o'clock that night, that would have been uh, Thursday, Thanksgiving, right? Yeah, so Thanksgiving, that's what I was doing, was 7 o'clock, getting people together to go, I can't sleep here, let's figure out somewhere else where we can attempt to see, can I sleep? Um, so we are here now in front of the police building and in front of the Ashland Court building. Yeah, nope, not allowed, 5 a.m. They, they went and left me a notice. Uh, so the next place that I go to, because I am going to be civil about this, the next place I go to, I'm going to make sure that I put a note right on my tent that you know, really lets them know if you're gonna come, 5 a.m., whatnot, can you at least bring a cup of coffee? <laughs> you want a response from me, you want me to come out, hey, this is the Ashland Police Department, we have your cup of coffee, I will come out. You are at least attempting to be civil towards me. I'll come out. I'll have that conversation. So you're going to move to a new location after I'll move this, to a and new location. then presumably you'll be moving to another location right. after that. Oh, and just to let you know, just just what my mind concept is is cool. Let's say I find a location where they do not do anything to me, uh -huh. right? I know a lot of other homeless people in Ashland that have no legal or lawful option. I'm definitively gonna find one of those people, hand that off to them, and then I'm gonna go to a different location and go, hey, is this? And I'm gonna keep pushing it until I am the last homeless person. That is where I have decided that's when I'll quit. All right, that's perfect. Thank you, Joseph. Happy travels. Well, they're at their third location now, and with having just received another vacate notice, it seems that they're gonna move to a fourth location. And one can only guess that at that fourth location, they'll receive another notice and have to move to a fifth location. And as far as Joseph says, that's going to be the plan. So however long they played this game is anyone's guess. But for now, that's where we're going to leave it, folks. I've been Keegan Van Hook. This is Us As We Are, and we'll see you in the next one. Hi there! You just caught me in the middle of eating my pizza from Martoli's, a local pizza shop here in Ashland. They don't sponsor us, but they could, and so could you. This is us asking for money. We need funding in order to do this show better. And the best way to do that would be for you, our audience, to offer us your support on Patreon. To check that out, go to patreon.com slash sailorboymedia. In addition, we are looking for a business underwriting sponsorship somebody who would be willing to assist us with funding in exchange for a shout out on our show. If you think you have the business that might be able to provide us that help, please email me at keeganvanhook at gmail.com. Uh, one more thing, in addition to these uh, interviews being aired on YouTube, we're also airing shortened versions of them as interstitial on Southern Oregon PBS. If you want to know more about that, go to sopbs.org slash us as we are. All right, that's really it. Have a good one.